I'd like to introduce Porvi Acharya from UC Berkeley Department of South and Southeast Asian Studies. Ms. Acharya will present an app she developed that uses the Google Vision API for multi-language text recognition of images. The app creates a convenient wrapper to capture an image on screen and to bridge the gap between less technical users and Google Vision services. Um, I have a note that says she may demo the app and also discuss how it is relevant for the research community. Ms. Acharya. Hi, everybody. Um, yeah, so this is my Google Vision app. I'm going to be sharing my screen. Okay, so basically what my app does is it performs multi-language text recognition. So I'll just give some quick background before um, I sort of go into developing, like sort of, ah, sorry. Okay, sort of going into what exactly this does. But um, as you can see here, like, because OCR software was developed, you know, in America, OCR has generally tended towards performing very well on Latin, um, languages written in Latin text, and not so much on languages written in non-Latin text. For example, we have on the left side over here, Hindi text. Um, if you compare like kind of OCR software that's out there today, you'll see that like, you face like the problem of hyper recognition of Latin characters. So if I just capture my screen here and show you how it pops up. Okay, yeah, so we see here that um, it, it performs it pretty well. Like it says the police caught the absconding thief. The mother took the crying girl into her lap. It performs pretty well for, um, you know, English language text recognition. Similarly, if I want to do the Hindi text on this side, yeah, so um, I'm assuming most of you guys can't read Hindi, but this looks pretty good to me. It looks, actually, I think it's all accurate. Um, yeah, so this is pretty different from most like kind of standard OCR software out there that's only able to really recognize, um, you know, the common languages that have been dominant in the computer industry for a while, like. Porvi, if uh, I can jump in, I think we're not seeing your updated image, because we've been seeing the same image the whole time. Oh, I'm so sorry, um, one second. Oh, wow. Okay, so, um, yeah, so I'll just, hopefully this, Zoom is a bit weird. I don't know how much you've done the screen sharing, but uh, do you see the pop up? Have... Ah, I see something now. Okay. Yeah, we see pop up window with Python in the upper left corner. It says Python and then OCR yes. and Hindi. Yeah. Yeah. So. I think okay. maybe we have lost you. Oh, you're back. Hello. Okay. Yes. Okay. We lost you there for a second. Oops. Okay. I'll start over again. Sorry. <sighs> okay. So do you guys see this pop up in the middle of the screen? Yes. Cool. Cool. Thank God. Okay. So here I just scanned some Hindi text on the left side, this column over here. And, um, you know, like I can read Hindi and this looks all correct to me. And you know, this is pretty different from uh, like kind of any other OCR software because most of them just hyper recognize Latin characters. So I guess since you guys missed me like showing the English demo. So here I'm changing the language to English and I'm going to OCR the right column. Just do this. Yeah, so here we see like, um, okay, it wasn't supposed to go, oh, anyway. <laughs> Sorry, one sec, let me, let me do that again real quick. Okay, 
Oh, okay, so here you can see like the mother took up the crying girl into her lap. Who is that man listening to the radio? We saw some girl seated on the road, you know? It performs well for both English and Hindi, which by the, in and of itself is already like outperforms like many, many other OCR software that can only like hyper recognize Latin languages. Um, but the real like benefit of this is that you can actually recognize multiple languages at the same time. So if I want to recognize both Hindi and English at once, let me just capture these two rows right here. Yeah, so it gets both of them at the same time, which is like, that's crazy. You know, usually what you see with kind of any other OCR software out there is that it'll very much gravitate towards English. So these Hindi characters right here would be actually recognized as some kind of garbage Latin text. And, you know, the fact is, it's like, it's, you know, first of all, recognizing that there are two separate languages. I mean, I did give it the hint, but it's recognizing there are two separate languages in each column and it's recognizing them correctly and not hyper recognizing it as Latin characters, which already, you know, that's huge, that's amazing. So, and, you know, I have printed it out like the straight text without like the bounding box information. So it does just like sort of print out a little bit out of order, but you know, it's still pretty good. Um, yeah, I mean, oh yeah, right. And like, I mean, I figured like, you know, I started this, this software because as a student at Berkeley, I've taken many language courses. I've taken a Sanskrit language course, you know, Middle Persian, all sorts of different things. And, um, you know, in, in my classes, uh, one sec, let me bring up an image real quick. Yeah, so we see here, this is a, this is an excerpt from a, famous Sanskrit grammatical text written in like 200 BC, I believe. And as you can see, this is, I just got the image directly from the PDF. So it's an embedded image. So, you know, obviously you can't like copy and paste this text or edit this text or anything, which is really inconvenient to any kind of modern day researcher who needs to, you know, be able to manipulate text like in Word or something like that. And um, yeah, like, um, that was really the kind of audience I had in mind was, you know, researchers who study, you know, kind of older texts that don't have like digitization yet, especially in non-English or like non kind of European languages that haven't had much work in OCR done to them. Um, and like, that was one sort of demographic. And the other was just, you know, anybody who like wants to be able to like grab text from a PDF. So for example, this is like, um, this is this is a textbook from my Hindi class in PDF form. So this is just a bunch of embedded images and this too, like it's not copyable text, which is, you know, that was sort of what I was thinking of when I started this. And, you know, I went straight to Google Vision API because as I was saying earlier, like any kind of other software out there, for example, there's a, there's a neural network kind of text recognition called Tesseract, which is open source. And that is one of the more notorious ones that will hyper recognize this kind of text as English. So Google Vision API right now is like one of the state of the art multi-language text recognition out there. And you know, that's why I thought to go straight to that. Um, yeah, that's about it. Uh, having been someone who's done some OCR in the past, just to see that you can do that on with the different languages is pretty amazing. It just seems like, yeah. wait, that, can't happen and so many times you exactly what you're saying happens it's like oh it's going to get these letters and everything else on the page will be a disaster um, exactly. so you're just kind of stopped before you can get started um, so you've developed this where do you want to kind of take it next what is it what is on your roadmap i was hoping to be able to you know deploy it to if not the like you know if not like the whole world kind of like at least like the berkeley research community um you know i did consult the berkeley you know cloud computing um people yes i do have a github url and i can i can share that um in a minute but um right what was i saying oh right yeah my goal so <laughs> i do when i consulted the berkeley computing department they did say you know um 
if you if you ask people to use their own API key while using the Google Vision API, it's unlikely to like, you know, it's unlikely that people would want to use it. So you'd have to like set up your own website and kind of just get donations that way and run the website. And I was thinking of doing that was, you know, using my own API key to sort of serve the text and people would just upload their images onto a website and I would give them the text back. But I do have to pay for the API cost. So I was thinking of running that through kind of a donation based system. So, um, yeah, but I really, I just want to make it available to the wider public because, you know, this serves a really vital need in academia. Oh, uh, great. Purvi, I have a question. So this sounds really awesome, but I was thinking, so in terms of getting a software to recognize, for example, languages which are written from left to right or right to left, so it's basically, or even recognizing the grammatical uh, uh, nuances. Uh, example, let's say Arabic to Hindi or Chinese to, Chinese to Hindi. How, how would you go about doing something like that? So, so you're talking about translating them or you're talking about recognizing the text? Um, hmm. I think I'll go from uh, recognizing. Okay, so, you know, like there have been, you know, Google has developed models to recognize um, Arabic and Hebrew, these kind of right to left languages. So by themselves, they do work pretty well. <laughs> you do bring up a good point, though, that when it's Arabic text or Hebrew text along with a left to right language, like English or anything, it does, it does get quite wonky. I think there needs, to, there needs to need to be more research into that. The right to left, left to right issue is really, it is a big problem. And you look at any kind of computer software today, it just completely, once you put any kind of right to left text into those software, they kind of go nuts. Microsoft Word, for example. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. And conjugations, especially if it's written cursively or printed, that's another, that's another end. Yes. So handwriting is also a very difficult one. Um, that's true. There has been a lot of development into handwriting in recent years. Um, you know, I've like, Japanese is another language that has had lots of OCR, like money invested into its OCR. So when I've like handwritten Japanese characters onto a paper and, you know, used Google Vision API to recognize them, they they did pretty well. Of course, I was, you know, taking care to write very neatly, but still, you know, it recognized it. So handwriting is another like, you know, burgeoning field waiting for investment. Cool. There's another question in the chat. I'll read it. Is there any future in expanding into other South Asian languages? Uh, I'm a CS sophomore at UC Santa Cruz, and I would love to have this work with Tamil and Telugu, Tel etc. Yeah, I'm so glad you asked this question because I wasn't planning to show this, but I'm very glad you asked. So let me just um, get something ready on my screen and I can show you. Sorry, Zoom slows down my computer like so much, so it's lagging. share my screen please tell me if nothing shows up <laughs> okay so right here is a Canada to like Canada textbook that I'm currently reading from um can you guys see is it is it okay oh okay okay cool cool yeah. um yeah so this is Canada so you were asking about Tamil and Telugu you know they're all in kind of the same language Dravidian language family so it does work for Tamil and Telugu definitely actually you know, it probably works better for those languages than they do than it does for um, Canada because it gets a bit more investment. So, so here, let me, yeah, sorry. Let me, okay, so here, here's Canada. And um, if I were to just like OCR this one and um, do it like this. 
give it a sec the pop-up okay cool 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 okay so i can confirm this text from me skimming it is correct and you know this is absolutely crazy because for the past like 10 15 years or so any kind of like south asian language has not gotten much work at all except for hindi and um you know this is crazy that a language of like you know 40 million speakers within india actually gets a nice ocr model recognition yeah definitely yeah and um even cooler even cooler is again we have the same situation where you have Kannada on the left side and english on the right side and you know i i do like i have this option to put in you know multiple languages but <laughs> Ironically, the thing is, even when I just have Canada as the listed language with no English, because of how even Google Vision is not, you know, not innocent of hyper recognizing Latin characters from non Latin languages. So even if I just list Canada without listing English, it. Oh, sorry, let me redo that. Okay. If I just like capture them without specifying English. Yeah, so it actually recognizes the English text perfectly because of how, like, how, you know, ingrained Latin character recognition is into OCR. And it recognizes the, yeah, it's, it's recognizing the Kannada text correctly, too. Um, yeah, so oftentimes, like, my, my, like, advice is if you're recognizing, like, multiple languages, like, you know, say two languages and one of them is a non-Latin language and the other is a Latin language, you might as well not even bother specifying the Latin language just because of how how much it'll hyper recognize the you know Latin already. Yeah. Uh, it's really tremendous. Um, I love these sessions. I'm it's every time we have one of these, the speakers are say amazing things, and um, this session is is no different. I mean, I think we've seen three different really amazing things happening. Um, I'd like to thank all the speakers again, really tremendous. I'd, we'd love to have you back. And these uh, talks tonight strike me as be really interesting to check in again in like six months and uh, kind of hear kind of what, what the progress has been with them. Um, tremendous. Um, thanks everybody, really. Um, and uh, you've got five, six minutes to grab a bite and, uh, and get to the debate if you'd like to. So thank you. Thank you so much for inviting us. Yeah, thank you, everybody. Thank, thank you, everyone. Time. This is really fun. All right, see you next Bye. month. Bye. Bye, everyone. Cheers. Bye. Bye, everyone. Is it okay if I answer the person's question? Sure. Okay. Yeah, go ahead. I wonder if they're still here. Well, we'll put yeah. it on the video so we can, you can, we'll send them the link. Okay. Cool. Um, yeah, so you asked like what happens if the selection is left blank. So it knows that the selection is like, okay, well, I can just show you real quick. Um, so if I just, if I just like do nothing, it'll like return. Um, but I think you mean more like what if I select like a non, like an area with no text in it? It knows that. It know like it'll tell, it'll be able to tell that there's no text in it and it won't return anything. I was wondering what happens if you don't choose any language um, as a selection? Would it only recognize the English or would it try to recognize the other languages? Yeah, so um, so if you said no language at all. Mm -hmm. Or like left that little, I guess, bar blank. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I have found that even when you don't specify a language with Google, like, you know, Google Vision API, I mean, if you're working with any non-Latin language, you definitely should be specifying because if you don't specify a language, it'll just it'll just recognize everything as Latin characters, got it, got it. even the Canada. Yeah, so you know that's that's the state of things. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, but Google like does have a very nice like automatic sort of language detection if you have good quality text to show it. Mm -hmm. If you don't, then it it doesn't perform. Got it. 